think it is a mistake to draw a sharp distinction between a paradigmatic uh, achievement in science and uh, any other forms of advancing science which is uh, considered to be merely solving riddles. I think that two condition is that we have a variety of degrees of originality in science and there is no particular sharp line to be drawn between a highest degree of originality and less degrees of originality. I think that the whole life of the first 35 years of this century in physics is full of examples of this uh, profoundly diffuse continuity between different levels of achievement. And that is number one. Number two, <coughs> I think it is a mistake which is implied in Kuhn's book to assume that great works of scientific discovery are always uh, works which uh, contain a new ground, a new conception of reality, which is really what he means by paradigm, that a new fundamental conception about the nature of things. This is not the case. There are great discoveries which consist in taking more literally the uh, current conceptions about the nature of things than any ordinary human being can. The kind of literal imagination is a great gift of great scientists like Irving, like Langmuir or like uh, James Frank who have been most successful and have made fundamental work by developing the currently accepted conceptions about the nature of things. Max von Laue and his discovery of the diffraction of X-rays also belongs to this class. Number three, <coughs> I think that the fundamental philosophy which induces uh, Tom Kuhn to refrain from acknowledging the continuous progress of science through the consecutive stages of uh, ever renewed fundamental conceptions. Fundamental conceptions of the nature of things is mistake. He uh, uses uh, this uh, far-reaching restraint in uh, acknowledging what is obviously a continuous process of uh, growing understanding of uh, nature because he does not want to be involved in a personal acknowledgement of what is true and what is false in the history of science. He thinks that one can write the history of science without such acknowledgement. I don't believe that one can and that one should try to do it. And uh, I ought to say that uh, his uh, view in this respect is rather tentative. He says uh, towards the end of the book that uh, it may be best to regard these consecutive stages as just one thing after another without judging whether that is progress in the same direction or not. But um, so far as he identifies himself with this view, I think he is mistaken. This is not the way of identifying what was the course of science. I don't think one can even form a reasonable conception of what is included and what is not included in the past history of uh, our thoughts in science and what is uh, merely a fancy which uh, not 
find, find no uh, position in the history of science. These are 